If you have a garden, then you know how much effort it is just to keep your lawn and your plants alive in the summer. So today we're going to look at a simple way of automating your sprinkler system so you don't have to go around with a watering can or a hose. Or maybe you try and use two watering cans at once to speed things up. And it's a particular pain when the plants are up high like this. This is perfect for an irrigation system. So let's dive in. So the thing that I'm going to be using is called a smart water valve by Sonoff. You just need to connect it between your outdoor tap and the sprinklers of the irrigation system that you want to control. Without automating it at all, having a button on the device to turn your sprinklers on and off is better than having to turn the handle of your tap because as well as being quicker, it means that you'll be able to have a similar water pressure each time because the tap will stay in the same position. In my setup I have a four-way tap so that I can have the main tap fully open and then each separate sprinkler system at a different pressure. Of course before you can use this device you actually need to build your irrigation or sprinkler system first. I currently have two sprinkler systems, one for the front garden and one for the back garden and then I have a new irrigation system that I'm using for two of the planters that I built out of decking boards. So back to the device itself, it uses Zigbee 3.0 for you to be able to control it remotely, meaning that you need to have one of these Sonoff hubs to make the most out of the device. If you already have an Amazon Echo device, then you can use this instead of the Sonoff hub, but it'll only have limited functionality, meaning you can only turn it on and off remotely, and you can't take advantage of the extra functionality of this device, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. If you're a Home Assistant user, then you'll be pleased to know that ZHA supports on and off capability, while Zigbee to MQTT supports most of its main features. For those of you who do use Zigbee to MQTT, I'll show you how to create automations later on in the video. If you're using a Sonoff Hub, then one of its features is the ability to set a schedule so that it will automatically water for you so many times per week at specific periods of the day. Now this is great, but I don't actually use this feature because the next feature is something that I really wasn't expecting. The device actually measures the flow rate of the water. This means that you can see how much you're actually using and actually set your irrigation schedule based on the number of litres that you want to use. This is great because it means that you can control how much water you are using and therefore how much money you are spending on water if you're on a water meter. Also, if you're using it for watering potted plants, then it's easy to either underwater or overwater your plants. So giving a consistent amount of water should help with this and stop them from dying, especially if you're in a warm climate and it doesn't rain very much. So far, I am really loving this new setup because I used to use a solenoid valve which needed a permanent power supply and didn't measure flow rate, whereas with this one it just uses four AA batteries which should easily last the summer season. And just to be safe, I would recommend changing the batteries each year so that you don't risk it running out of battery when you're away from home. It does also seem to work okay with rechargeable batteries, but I suspect that they might not last as long as alkaline batteries. The devices are rated for 0.6 bar all the way up to 8 bar, so they should work for most home water supplies. Since I've been using it, I've thankfully not had any issues with leaks, which can't be said for most standard hose connectors, but I did use the PTFE tape that was provided to ensure a good seal. Using this tape is a bit fiddly, but it's worth the extra effort. And a hot tip for using PTFE tape is to ensure that you wrap it around the thread the same way that the fitting goes on, otherwise you might end up chewing the tape as you put the fitting on. My final plan is to have one of these devices as the main valve connected directly to the outside tap, which will help minimise the risk of leaks, and then have one on each watering system of my four-way connector. This will give me full control over choosing which part of the garden to water and with how much water. And by having one main one connected to the tap, it also acts as a fail safe so that if for some reason one of the other ones gets stuck open, then I can turn off the main one which will shut off the main supply and prevent me wasting lots of water. 
It's also worth noting that it's only rated for temperatures down to 5 degrees Celsius. And of course, water freezes at 0 degrees anyway. So my plan is, is to bring them in over winter so I protect the devices. Another thing to note is that there are two versions of this device that cater for the two different most common fittings around the world. So make sure that you get the right one for your region. So if you're using the Sonoff app, then there is not much more to say about the device really, as it's all quite easy to use. Just make sure that it's within sufficient range of your Sonoff Zigbee hub so that it reliably turns on and off. Now onto the Zigbee to MQTT setup. Just like any other Zigbee device, it's easy to add to your network, but to use the device itself, you're going to need to send some MQTT messages to get it to work. If you're using Home Assistant, then it does expose an on-off switch, but I recommend that you don't use this just in case the off command for some reason fails to run, leaving you with a big water bill. Thankfully Sonoff has thought about this and the command to turn it on can also include a duration after which it should automatically turn off. This will ensure that if your device loses communication then it will still only remain on for the time that you wanted it to. As I mentioned earlier the other option is to specify how many litres of water you would like to use, at which point it will again turn itself off even if the device loses communication. For this reason I would strongly recommend that you only use either the Sonoff app with a Sonoff Zigbee hub or use Zigbee to MQTT. Using an Amazon hub or ZHA at the time of recording won't give you the protection of it automatically turning off the device if it loses communication and so in my opinion it's not worth the risk. So to use the timed or capacity based auto off feature, you could just create an automation in Home Assistant which sends the relevant MQTT commands. But if you're on at least version 2024.8 of Home Assistant, then there is a different way that you could do it. If you create a button helper, then you can assign actions to this button helper without having to actually create an automation. This approach allows you to easily create buttons for different watering durations or quantities, and then you can assign the these helpers to your SWV device. As you can see, my garden planters device has two buttons I can press, which gives different amounts of water to the plants. And these buttons can of course be easily added to your dashboard as well. There are various ways you could do it. You could instead create a script which allows you to specify a duration or water quantity. Either way, the piece of information you need is how to construct the MQTT messages. So I've left a link in the description to my GitHub which contains a couple of examples as well as link to the Zigbee to MQTT device page as well. As you can see here, the device in Home Assistant also exposes a few other entities such as the device state which can tell you if there's a water shortage, and the water flow rate. For the flow rate, I've created a template sensor which shows it in litres per minute instead, which is a more useful measurement for me. It also gives you an approximate battery percentage, which will allow you to create low battery automations. As you can probably tell, I really like these devices. I've already got three of them and I've got another one on my Christmas wish list. There are similar looking devices out there available on AliExpress and I haven't tried any of these, but I think the Sonoff one is reasonably priced at around £30 or $30 and I like the look and feel of it as well compared to some of the other ones. The final thing you might want to consider is adding a soil moisture sensor to your setup so that you can fully automate the watering process. I tried out this one from AliExpress and it seems like some of the versions actually have issues with the product. Unfortunately mine is one of these that doesn't work properly and its readings are unreliable, it spams the Zigbee network and therefore the battery doesn't last long either. I'm now trying this one out instead which so far seems much better. Well that's it for this video so please let me know in the comments about your irrigation setups and thanks until next time.